you've all had the experience of having multiple tasks that you needed to do, and then someone comes along and gives you one more thing. Like those mornings when you're at work and the phone is ringing off the hook, and you can't get one thing done before someone else calls and needs something. And then another coworker says, oh, someone without appointment is here who wants to talk to you. Or maybe those times at home that you've been in front of the stove and trying to cook dinner because you or one of your children had to be in an appointment at a certain time, so you're trying to get that done. And then one of your children comes in the room to tell you that someone else in the house just broke something. Those times when you've got multiple things going on and you don't feel like you're able to catch a breath. Jesus is having one of those experiences here in the middle of chapter 6 of John. There are times in the Gospels where the crowds get to be too much for him, and he just sends everybody away so that he can retreat to prayer. In this occasion, he's been able to do that, and he's able to go all the way to the other end of the sea in order to get some peace. But then the disciples and the crowds come back and are pushing in on him, wanting something else. And Jesus recognizes the nature of their demands, and he says, you're not here because you've seen certain signs and wonders. You're not here because you've experienced conversion. You're here because you had your fill of bread and fish, and you're here because you want more. But then Jesus goes into a deeper level with his teaching kind of teachings that the disciples would have found it hard to understand in the moment. And he says, if you truly understood who I am and who it is that the Father has sent to be with you, then you would realize that I represent that bread that is passed down from heaven. If you are able to receive what it is I have to give you, it will bring a calm to you. It will reduce your franticness, and you will be at peace with what I have to offer you. Jan Karen is best known for the series of books that are known as the Mitford series about an Episcopal priest who lives in a small community in rural western North Carolina, Father Tim. And Father Tim is someone who has never been married. And later on in the book series, he begins a relationship with a woman his age who moves into the area. And this courtship continues, and eventually the couple gets married. After the tension carries on for a number of books, then Karen has them both married in one book. But fans of this popular series wrote to her and said, we are disappointed that you did not invite us to the wedding. So she goes back and writes a smaller book to fill in the details of what happened when Father Tim got married. And after he is married, a bishop friend of his said, I want to give you a wedding present. I've got a cabin in Maine in a very rural area, and I would like for you and your bride to use that for your honeymoon. It's very rustic, and you'll love it. You'll enjoy getting away from it all. Well, after the wedding, when Tim and his bride go to this cabin in Maine, somebody meets them there to drive them to the cabin, somebody who's sort of a caretaker for this place. And he discovers that this cabin is way more rustic than what he had in mind. The guy is mentioning all the different things that are wrong with the house. He says, now there's a barrel upside down in the middle of the dining room. That's because there's a hole in the floor that snakes got in through. And we plugged it up with some cloth, but some rodents or something got in there and removed the cloth. So make sure you don't move that barrel. And the commodes have a little trouble working, so you'll probably have to jiggle the handle to keep it from continuously running. And we'll bring some food for you each day and place it in the icebox but you are aware that the cabin doesn't have any electricity, right? And I'm going to come out and check the water because the bishop wanted me to check to see if the water was brown again, the way it is sometimes. <laughs> so the couple goes out and they 
stay in this very rustic cabin. And they discover that the mattress kind of dips in, so they feel a little like a hot dog in a bun. <laughs> and the feather pillows that they have, the feathers stick out of it and stick into their hair. And they have to leave the windows open so that they can get the air in at night. And they hear the ducks and the loons that are making noise all throughout the night. So that Father Tim said he thought that they were sitting in the rocking chairs on the front porch. But they do learn to make the best of it. <clears throat> and every day food is brought to them. And they've got a gas stove inside of the kitchen that they're able to use. And they have a campfire outside. So they'll have things like beef stew. And the caretaker will bring bread that's not yet baked. And they'll put that on the campfire so that it'll bake. And they'll have a bowl of stew with bread. And they'll use the bread to sop up the gravy afterwards. And there's one of those old camping type coffee pots that they fill with water and the beans and put that on top of the gas stove so that that can have coffee in the morning. And after a while, they kind of get used to the place and they really enjoy it. He asked his bride on the first morning, what is it you want to do? And with great enthusiasm, she says, nothing. And so they spend their days sitting out on the front porch, watching the sunrise in the morning and the sunset at the end of the day, watching the different animals as they come and go. She has her sketch pad and she sketches nature scenes that are all around them. And he has a few books that are in a bookshelf that the bishop keeps there. On one of the last nights that they're there, they don't have food being brought in for them. And so Father Tim says he's going to go down into the town to the small grocery store that's there to buy some supplies. And they decide they'll make breakfast food. So he's picking up bacon and eggs for them. And she says, oh, and, and get some grapes and any other fresh fruit that you might have. So he walks down the path while there's still daylight. And he's walking around the grocery store and he's picking up supplies. And when he's almost ready to check out, he's got his wallet in his hand. And the grocer asks him the question, do you need anything else? And he said, no, I don't. And then the grocer said, are you sure? And at that moment, the question hits Father Tim on a deeper level. It's a simple question about groceries from somebody who is a proprietor of a small business. But he thinks about what he's been experiencing in those days. How he's away from all of the trappings of modern day life with no phone and no electricity, no connection to the outside world. How he has nothing at all to do except to enjoy nature and being in the company of his new wife, whom he's married for the first time in his 60s. He realizes how completely filled with joy and contentment as he is. And in response to not only the grocer's question, but a question that comes from a more deeper existential level, do you need anything? He gladly says, no. What Father Tim and that character was experiencing in that moment is what Jesus is trying to teach the disciples and all of those who were pressing in on. That if you and I can truly appreciate who he is as the Son of God and what he has to offer, then we can find that peace and contentment and joy that often eludes us. You and I are very busy people. We become busy when we have children in school and they have all those extracurricular activities. We become busy as we get older and capable of doing things and everybody wants us to volunteer with this group or another. And many of you can report that retired people are some of the busiest of all. We are some of the busiest, most frantic people. That is the nature of our culture. But here in this time of rest, in this place of sanctuary, we connect with the gospel and what Jesus is trying to teach us. Here we find that peace and calm which often eludes us. It happens when we participate in the sacrament. 
something that John Wesley stressed as constant communion, as he and others tried on a daily basis to go and partake of the Eucharist, something that was just as challenging for him and his contemporaries as it would be for us. You and I, in reflection on what Jesus Christ is saying about being the bread of heaven, and those who take what he gives will never be hungry, but will always be filled. We experience that at the communion table. When you and I come down with open palms to receive a morsel of bread into our hands. Because it's through this piece of bread that Christ our Lord teaches us what it feels like to want absolutely 